For years, Julie Anderton traveled the world dancing. A childhood spent at the ballet bar led to opportunities to study, then travel, entertain, and eventually teach. While Pilates allowed her body to keep its strength and form as she aged, it also offered her the opportunity to educate others on the power of movement. I've actually got to admit now, now that I'm sitting for much longer periods of time throughout my day in my very new life, I'm definitely feeling the aches, the pains, and the stiffness now more than ever. So I know for a lot of you that are listening, you are feeling it too, and Julie's going to be helping us out with all of that. She's the founder of Studio One Pilates, and her journey will have you wanting to dance like no one is watching. So welcome to Living Your Life with Leanne Lang, the podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. And for more information, as always, you can head to extensionmarketing.com. Hi, Julie. Hi. (laughs) I should also mention Julie is one of the experts that's joining me on our Awaken a Better You wellness cruise. We'll get to that um, a little bit later because who would have thought as classmates mm-hmm. at Green Bank Middle School, <laughs> that life would kind of have us sitting here in, in these awesome. chairs. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked me. <laughs> oh, wait, well, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I think, you know, when we're kids, we, we just see each other in the schoolyard, right? Mm-hmm. And we kind of have our friends and our groups and we kind of intertwine and go through classes. And by the end of it, I'm like, we were in so much stuff together yeah. through middle school and then through and high, school. high school. And I always knew you as the dancer. Yeah, and you, you were the gymnast. <laughs> And, you know, and that's kind of how you know each other and and you you kind of are in and out of knowing, oh, no, she's dancing here or she's traveling Mm -hmm. here. Um, You were, your childhood was really spent in a dance studio. Yeah, especially through those, like, Mm -hmm. middle school to high school. Mm -hmm. That's when I got really serious into it, for sure. Yeah, and, like, we had similar parallel lives because you were at the gym when I was at the dance studio and and you have that commitment to something outside of school. So socially, it makes it really different <laughs> in high school. Our lives were slightly different. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I mean, and I knew your group of friends and I and I, mm-hmm. and, and I know because one of your great friends growing up, Julia Costain, was yeah. also, you know, someone that yeah. had trained with me in the gym. Like you realize that so many, especially I think growing up in the 80s, you yeah. know, it was, there wasn't all of these other options of going home on our video games or no. on the apps or on anything no. else. Like you were in these activities. Yep. Um, what was the, what led you into the world of dance? My mom put me in everything when I was young. I even did probably gymnastics with your mom <laughs> at some point. Um, and every year you sort of go through, well, you've been asked to do another dance class. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to do more swimming or something has to give so every year I always accepted the extra dance class I always I was drawn to that I don't know whether it was the love of dance or the teachers I had or it just and so you get more and more involved and your family gets involved and my parents were so supportive you know always taking me there and and that was our social life. What, uh, back then, what was the dance school? Where were you, where did you train at? I did at Greta Leeming. Okay. Yeah. So I know Greta Leeming. Yeah. And, and it, you know, there are, because we've been, I've been in the city for so long, names that stand out because there was, um, at one point, not not an elitist, but there were there were different dance schools that were recognized yeah. for either producing ballet dancers, like yeah. technically trained dancers and now you have just so many dance schools that you know you've got like the dance moms and you've got these these shows that are really about kids coming in doing these spending classes doing these choreographies Mm -hmm. going on show and doing their yeah it it, there's a very different mindset to when you're actually classically training to dance or if you're going to a fun dance class yeah is that that a fair statement to make it's changed over the years it's changed since i've graduated from there but yeah Greta's was definitely an it still is an institution in ottawa like and a lot of her students became professionals or moved on into teaching careers and a lot of her old staff or even teachers then started their own studio so like there's always this like six degrees of separation Mm -hmm. they connected to Greta's in some way for you was it the classic training was Um, it like did you need it or yeah I mean I definitely love ballet I love both I I got into ballet and jazz in those days and back then we weren't allowed to even start jazz until you were about 10 or 12 I think (laughs) I forget I think I started about 10 or 11 and uh yeah she had to have that classical background you had to have that was where you got your technique from and then and now like kids will start in jazz at like age three and they're oh yeah and yeah they they really are i've been at those recitals and then you've got the hip-hop starting young uh there's they've moved into more of that modern like the movement contemporary so i mean there's a lot of opportunity that you weren't you're not being forced to wait till 11 12 to be able to move into those Mm -hmm. classes. it's changed definitely was there always a love passion for movement yeah 
yeah, I couldn't sit still. And that's why my mom put me in so many things when I was young, because I guess I was just, you know, doing splits everywhere, <laughs> just moving all over the place. So you you dance. You dance through high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I know because you were competing. Um, and then what wasn't really known about is that you, you went and studied in the States. Like, you, yeah. how was that process? Like, at what point did you realize the Canadian university system wasn't going to be for you yeah. and you went that direction? It was kind of a fluke, actually. I, I was at a dance competition in Niagara Falls and I was performing my solo, which went disastrously <laughs> it was awful because the stage was like ice and it was a, a ballet a point solo so I'm wearing the hard toe point shoes which are made of satin and as soon as I hit the stage I knew and so my body just froze I kept dancing but we call it marking like when you're not doing it full out because I knew I, would, I could break an ankle I, I was just and I was freaking out I wanted to just run off stage and stop and cry but in the front row there's all my teachers just sitting there watching and I thought I gotta keep going and so I did the show must go on but it wasn't my best it wasn't a full out dance and um, I went off and had my little diva draw I was like I'm not going back on that stage and I had all my group numbers I had all these other numbers to do but um so one of my teachers came running back and said, Julie, the, the judges understand. They could, they could see you weren't just, you know. They could see that the floor. Oh, so yeah. the floor matters, like the oh, flooring. Yeah. yeah, typically, like say at the NEC, if you're going to mm-hmm. see a show, most companies would bring their own floor or the NEC would probably lay down a dance floor. And it's it's got a rubberized sort of texture, so you're not going to slip. And if you don't have that, then there's this... Um, glue called rosin that you would put on your shoes and and I probably had that on but it was still it was like a in a hotel ballroom you know the parquet wooden flooring and it was like ice so I just you can't you can't can't turn like right it's it's almost like if there's a slip while you're on point you're Mm -hmm. gonna break the ankle yeah or you just yeah you're gonna fall you're gonna yeah yeah, I mean there's there is that sense of of urgency of this is not gonna end well yeah so what happened so so my teachers came running backstage saying the judges know and one of them wants to offer you a scholarship to university and I was like what (laughs) like I just bombed and they know but she could see my technique she could see I was well trained that I was smart that I wasn't going to kill myself over this solo and you know I had a whole day to go so I don't know she saw some potential there and then I got the confidence to go back out and they did they coated the floor with coke actually (laughs) with coke yeah just that's what they told me but you know I just got into my next costume but they said they would coat it with with coke the sugar and the, the texture would make it stickier so I kept going and uh yeah and then she did she held through so this um where was one this of the for? judges was um she was one of the professors at this University of Missouri in Kansas City and she that's how they recruit they go around to auditions and or sorry to competitions and that's how they'd find some of their dance instead of holding which uh, they did hold auditions at the school but to get people from out of state and out of country that's how they they found people so I got recruited to this university on a scholarship. What grade were you in? That was, I think I was grade 13 back then. Okay. (laughs) I think that was my last year um, because my mom didn't want me to go. She was not ready to let me go that far away. And we hadn't really discussed about my after after high school, like dance career, what I was going to do. So yeah, she was like, you know, you're staying here. (laughs) It's funny because I have, so... I mean, when I was training, I knew that I my yeah, end goal was an NCAA for. scholarship. And so that's what I was training for. And I also knew that all of the, um, like you did the OAC year. Yeah. Like I left after grade 12. Right. So I knew going in like grade 11 into grade 12, like that was my signing year, right? Yeah. Like, so yeah. I, I was signed and I knew I was going away to university by November mm-hmm. of my grade 12 year because I knew that I was, I couldn't give my body one extra year of finishing right. OAC when all of the American kids were younger, all, young, yeah. be going after grade 12. Um, so my mindset was very much my whole childhood was I'm going to the States. That's mm-hmm. that was my end goal. Mm-hmm. Um, but same, very similar. My mom, like, you know, there were scholarships there or, and Closer. opportunities at different places. And yeah. I had one in California and it was just like, yeah, not a chance. Well, when <laughs> you we were going, we, we hadn't ended up at UMass at all. Yeah. Like, and my, my teachers at Greta's hadn't really, you know, like it wasn't something a lot of kids at our studio did was going off to university for dance. Right. Cause, cause you were for dance. I mean, yeah. I was, I was competing. I, I was, right. but I had studying I was studying my degrees mm-hmm. and competing on the side yeah you were actually there to studying dance. dance yeah it was a bachelor of fine arts in dance study like a major in dance and uh 
So yeah, in, in Canada back then, there wasn't a lot of programs. There's, there was, and they've changed since then, so I don't want to get mm-hmm. them wrong now. But at the time, Ryerson was still just a, a, like a college diploma. It wasn't a university degree. And York had a program, but yeah, some of my teachers just thought, no, you're better than that. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to get more than what you could get here dance-wise. Like, yes, you get a degree out of it, but is that what you want? What are you going to do with a degree? So, um, yeah, I stayed in Ottawa until I got my parents' permission. <laughs> uh, I, I went to Carleton the first year in psychology. Cause just, so you actually pretty, didn't go to no, Carleton to, it, right away? I mean, when you said you were applying in November, like, this was probably March-ish that I got recruited, and... So to go that next September, like it was just, I'd already applied to all the Ontario okay. universities and yeah, it was a big decision to make. I hadn't even been to the school or seen it. Because you would have been much older than as a freshman going in because yeah. you already did your OAC year yeah. and, and then, a full year. So yeah. you were... So I didn't go as a freshman. I went as a sophomore. sophomore. Yeah. And um, I was able to transfer all my academic credits. So I was able to kind of condense things into a three-year program there. Yeah. And so you're dancing. Yep. So how many hours a day? I mean, that's um, your class. Yeah, it was like fame. You're going to school at <laughs> fame because it was a conservatory for the arts. And so the, the actors were down the hall. We got to know we had musicians on the floor above. And um, they a lot of the actors, well, especially the drummers, percussionists, they would play for some of our classes. And we had live accompaniment, which is nice. So you don't get that very often anymore. Um, so, yeah, you're in. we had a technique class first thing in the morning, either modern or ballet, depending which year you were in. And then you'd have a, a middle class, which would be sort of like, um, dependent on the year again, but you, a sort of an elective improv or learning how to choreograph composition. And then you'd have another tech, the other technique class, the modern or the ballet, whichever you didn't have in the morning. Um, and then the afternoon was more, we had a lot of rehearsals. Part of it, ours was a dance performance based one, not a teaching based one. So we had, I don't know how many shows a year, at least three or four shows a year. So we're always pre- like rehearsing and then performing. Like this really was like fame. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, I'm I'm hearing in the background is like fame. fame. I want to live forever. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. as jazzy or no, yeah. as that, yeah. but yeah, we were, and we had to learn everything about the theater. We had to learn the production side. We had to take production courses, learn how to sew. Cost. We did our own costumes. Oh gosh. We did the music and yeah. If you look back now, like where did some of your classmates end up? A lot of them, well, because it was in the states, um, a lot of them would move to New York after Mm -hmm. there was a few other Canadians in my year so uh they went back to sort of they were from BC they went west coast Vancouver because there's a good um especially contemporary dance scene out that way Mm -hmm. um yeah and then some were from local they were Kansas City so they stayed local okay so you do these classes you graduate with a degree in fine arts yep okay you're dancing still Mm -hmm. so your body has held up yeah your body's holding up at this point yeah yeah I was pretty good shape then <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine right? Yeah. you're dancing that that often where you have this degree mm-hmm. you've been gone for a couple of years yeah where where do you take this because I'm thinking you come back to Canada I remember like yeah well it's, no. it, there, there, there's not so much of a wow this is this is what fantastic yeah I have so much opportunity with this degree well I was yeah. lucky because the same professor who recruited me she also um was a co- founder of a dance a small contemporary regional dance company there so uh um yeah she hired me straight out of school I was lucky that I was the only one of that graduating class that got hired she really liked you yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know how I also <laughs> another one it. of her like so so the, it was um a lot of the professors were also involved as dancers mm-hmm. still and uh I think another one was sort of pushing for my name that's great yeah, yeah so how on earth do you end up on a cruise ship <laughs> so yeah like so working in the states that's a whole nother thing and right. yeah that I you know visas and everything else it got to be a little stressful so I only did the the partial season with her there and then I, I came back home and moved to Toronto for like the blink of an eye because <laughs> again Ottawa doesn't have like professional jobs for dancers really mm-hmm. um and so, yeah, I moved to Toronto to start auditioning for stuff. And about three weeks in, I got the cruise ship job. So I took it right away because I didn't even think, like, you just take a job if you get it. You know, you don't think, oh, well, something else might come up in a few weeks. So, like, I just took it and went. So, yeah, started That's... cruising. So, okay. So, yeah, this is where this is where I find, you know, interesting. Because yeah. you look at the opportunities, right? You've got half your classmates that are off to New York to fight mm-hmm. their way through Broadway and any mm-hmm. opportunity that's there in dance companies. Uh, but you kind of think, like, where 
where in the world do you end up like this? And so a crew, like, and then I'm thinking, gosh, like you go on to travel, there's entertainment yep. everywhere, right? Yep. And so you became the, I was entertainment. the entertainment staff. Yeah. And we were the entertainment staff. We weren't just hired. Like, so there's, again, now it's like there's huge cruise liners that have everything on it, you know, skating rinks and stuff. And so we were on a very small ship and we had extra other duties we had to do. You you were greeting people. Yeah. Yeah. Picture like the love boat and, you know, (laughs) there was Julie on there. Uh, We had to like... Okay, so now I've pictured fame. Yeah. And now I've pictured the the love love boat. boat. (laughs) Okay. We're we're doing well here. I know. Um, So, okay. So we were up like sometimes we'd have to do what was called walk a mile or stretching class in the morning and we weren't trained to do stretching class but just something for an activity for the the passengers we had to call bingo occasionally and like but as we went on like so say the first month um our cruise director got to know who Sean at what activities so I would always get booked to do the walk a mile and the stretching I would hang out with the guy that taught aerobics and I would if he was away then I would teach his aerobics mm-hmm. classes while he was away what was the cruise line and where were you cruising so I was on it doesn't even exist anymore it's called uh, Regal Cruises it was a cruise line and it was the Regal Empress was my ship um and the the bonus about that because I had other friends who were on like Carnival and stuff or Holland America and they got to go to such cool places and but they would be on a ship for a six month contract and do the same route for six months so in a way you kind of you, it gets bored like, ah, like, I'm not yeah. getting off in port today you know or like I've been I'm there just, done that yeah whereas we were always in different places because it was a smaller ship so one bonus it was able to fit into the Pan- Panama Canal so we got to go through there at the start of my tour and then we came up like when I first got hired for this they said you're going to start down in the Caribbean I'm like awesome yeah. <laughs> you know? and then you're going to be up in New England states and eastern Canada I'm like really <laughs> Newfoundland like but would you have ever booked a holiday to Newfoundland person have I'm- you <laughs> <laughs> All, all my Newfoundland yeah, friends I are know. going, I've been Nothing telling you how amazing it is out there, but no, I haven't been out there. But it is amazing out there. Like we got to tour, sorry, the whole island and I saw the Bombay Fjords and like, I would never have thought, oh, I should head there for a holiday, but it is gorgeous. And so yeah, I saw parts of Canada that I wouldn't have seen probably. Mm-hmm. And then uh, same with New England, like Martha's Vineyard and all these tiny little places that are just beautiful. So it was kind of cool that way. And then we ended up heading back down towards the end of my contract, back down to Caribbean again, Nassau, Bahamas and stuff. The typical. Yeah. Cruise, the, yeah. yeah. Where you want to get away. How long did you do that for? I just took a six month contract and uh, they wanted us all to renew our whole cast. And I, I wanted to, I was like, yeah, I'm dancing. Why not? And then Um, I wanted Christmas off though and they weren't going to give me Christmas off and like you look back and you go really (laughs) could have like just stayed on but I turned it down because I wasn't going to get Christmas so and I was kind of ready uh, like so I was dating okay (laughs) so yeah so on the love boat on the love boat Julie found love (laughs) we think yeah at this point yeah yeah at this point it's like you're living the life of course yeah and that's part of it I think that you're you're in Neverland like you have someone making your bed (laughs) you have chambermaids like coming in you have someone waiting on you you go to the staff mess and someone pours your drinks and you have no bills, no rent, no, you know, like life's pretty easy. You just show up and do your, I mean, you're right. working, but it's like, it's not hard work. You're being catered <laughs> now to. Now that I know what hard work <laughs> is, it's not hard work. So, uh, yeah, it's, and then you're traveling and you get off in these cool, Exotic amazing places. places. So it's pretty easy to fall in love yeah. in this environment. Yeah. So you meet your husband. Yes. Uh, as he, part of the entertainment staff? What, he, he worked in the, in the gift shop. Okay. So there's a lot of, um. Brits especially, he was British, uh, that worked either in the gift shop or in the casino. I don't know why they get hired into certain locations mm-hmm. on the ship. And uh, same idea, he wanted to travel the world and, and so he came to America and <laughs> yeah, and that's how we met. So he was on around the same time as I was and our contracts were ending around the same time. So then I'm faced with, okay, if I'm not renewing my contract on the ship, do I stay in Canada, go back to Toronto? Do I go somewhere else? Like, can't really go to New York without a visa. Um, Vancouver was an option, toyed around. But uh, one of my good friends from university had moved to London, England. And uh, I thought, well, I know someone in London. And if he's from Manchester, then that's a shorter long distance than Canada. So um, I ended up moving to London to move in with her while dating sort of long distance. Yeah, with him. So you followed a boy. 
I did. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> you know what? I, I remember because Stephen Vecta uh, in his podcast, I remember going back and his story of following love to a variety of different places. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. Yeah. You know, what you do and the, yeah. and the situations you put yourself in following, you know, mm-hmm. what you think is going to Irrational. be it, right? You know? <laughs> It, it could be at the time, but yeah. you're you're in such a um, mm-hmm. you're in such a bubble. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in that love bubble. Yeah. So you're feeling good about this. You go to London. Yeah, and I didn't think I was following him. I was still following my dance career because I didn't move to Manchester to live with him. I moved to London, and I still kept auditioning. And I was yeah, I thought I was doing the right thing, but uh, yeah. After we got married, well, at that point we got married. That I, he was still up in Manchester earning a fairly decent wage for that age time of our life, I guess. And I didn't have my dream job dancing. So he's like, well, it makes more sense for you to move up here. So I gave up dancing, basically, when I got married. I moved up to Manchester to be a housewife, (laughs) which blows my mind, blows my friend's mind at the time. You know, they were like, well, but she's smart. She knows what she's doing. So, yeah. I did not know this part. Oh, really? (laughs) No. I did not know this yeah, part because I'm yeah. scratched. I'm like, you what? I gave it up. Yeah. I mean, I thought at the time too that there's got to be dance schools I could probably teach or there's got to be something. So, but yeah, after investigating a little bit and then the bills are coming in. So I ended up just taking office admin job. Yeah. You, s- I didn't. Okay. Yeah. But that's also what led me into what I do now because mm-hmm. I was, I joined the gym up the street and I was taking aerobics classes after work every day. I, like, you know, that feeling you can't sit all day for eight hours. Our bodies have been trained to move mm-hmm. all day. And, uh, so I decided, yeah, I shouldn't be, I should be the one up there. <laughs> like, why is she teaching? I could be getting paid to teach. So I started taking, um, courses while I was in Manchester. Uh, that's where I did my group fitness and I did personal training training but I never became a personal trainer I just got into the but that's where you got into it mm-hmm. I did all my first want... certifications there okay so it did it led you yeah. to what eventually was going to be the yeah. path you were going to take right once you were out of the situation in Manchester yeah yeah and back on your own yeah path so mm-hmm. I'm gonna say because it wasn't a long it wasn't a long, long marriage it wasn't no. a long marriage no about a year and a half ish maybe together yeah so I was in London trying to still pursue dance career for a year and a half and then and then moved up there and yeah so I got certified and I got hired by Virgin you know like Virgin Air Richard Branson I got hired through his gym and uh maybe did maybe a couple of shifts and then we split so then I thought okay well I'm not doing this <laughs> I didn't know how when I was going to be coming back to Canada uh once everything was settled financially then I moved back in with my parents <laughs> came back to Ottawa and tried to start over there are a lot of people in this situation mm-hmm. and I mean we kind of laugh about it now like when you're just like and then I moved back in with Yay. my parents <laughs> um but it's the reality I think of chasing a certain dream and sometimes it doesn't work out yeah. and then you're kind of left going back to square one yeah like how your heart I, I would think you're heartbroken mm-hmm. you're devastated at this failed opportunity mm-hmm. financially I'm thinking you're not quite yeah there yeah are you like where's your mindset at it was just people going like, through now this right that I know what it is it was depression like I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and you think I gave up so much for that marriage I gave up my dance career I gave up my country my friends my family to move over there to be with him and then it comes crashing down so then you're starting over like really trying I mean I had that that sort of aerobics background. Okay, but what am I going to do with that? And so when I first moved back, I started looking at admin jobs. I was looking, and everything's government. <laughs> Ottawa, it's like, okay. And I'm picturing the job I did in Manchester, answering phones, typing emails, writing letters. Can I do that bilingual? And I, I did my bilingual certificate at SRB, but I hadn't used it. I lived in the States. I had lived in England. I'm not speaking French over there. So I just thought, I don't think I can do that job. And I'm having little mini meltdowns and breakdowns. And it was actually a friend back in England. And he said, move back here. They're looking for Pilates and yoga instructors here. I'm like, I can't do that either. <laughs> like, I'm not certified in that. But something about that made me not Google yoga, but Google Pilates. And I, I, that's when I started my Pilates training. Did you do the Pilates? In, but you did those training in here in Ottawa. I started it here. Yeah. I got my base. Like, So there's mat work, which a lot of people know about is 
what you can do in community classes or in gyms. Um, and so I did, I started with the mat work training and then I took a couple of, from the same teacher, one of the other girls in the class, we did uh, some reformer sessions. So that's the, the most common apparatus that most studio, Pilates studios will have. And I, one session on there and I was like, okay, I love this. <laughs> and it's interesting because I, while you didn't use it as a dancer, mm-hmm. a lot of dancers use Pilates yeah. as a, like, you know how like hockey players have off ice training? Yeah. That Pilates is almost like the off ice training yeah. for dancers. But it's, it's expensive and dancers are poor. <laughs> so it's true. But now, and I think major companies now have, you know, setups in their gyms, they have Pilates trainers and they have all the equipment for their dancers, but that's in a a bigger company, Mm -hmm. like the smaller independent artists won't have access to that as much. Um, And that's why the mat work. And I did actually, my mom sent me some books and VHS tapes and I was doing in London. I had my own little self-practice of some Pilates stuff. I I got, that's where I got introduced to it. Why is it so helpful? Like what, what was it that would drew you to the Pilates over the yoga or everything else? Because that is really where your career has kind of blossomed. And you talk about having a reformer. Mm -hmm. I mean, in your studio now, there's the Cadillac and, you know, we've, there's like, and by Cadillac, I, it's, it's like the it's Cadillac of machines, but it is called the Cadillac. And yeah. it is like this monstrous, I once nicknamed it like a torture chamber yeah. kind of it's looking thing. It's been the rack. Like people have called it the rack over the years. It looks, but basically, so Joseph Pilates is who it's all named after. He developed all these, he like designed, he's an innovator and uh, he made these pieces of equipment, but he started them working with prisoners of war back in like the four, 1940s. And uh, he took hospital beds so picture a guy sitting in a hospital bed with his leg up in a a pulley strap or something Mm -hmm. and he would have him contracting his muscles and like you know it's rehab and so he saw that the people who did the exercises with him recuperated faster than those who didn't and some of them were it was just breathing exercises so um that's why they call it the rack it looks like a torture device because it is that's where he got his creative designs from was based on a a like a hospital bed Mm -hmm. which kind of and then you would have like you can see that now when you look at it now I can see it now my goodness I really can and then to think like for them to assist themselves in lifting themselves off they have the bars above so that they can grab it and it almost looks for me like parallel bars for like you know for gymnasts but that's really what it is that Mm -hmm. was all developed Mm -hmm. that's where you got the all the ideas inspiration yeah you have a pretty big practice going here with Studio One. And I we worked together for years because Julie was one of my contributors on Today's the Day. Um, and the focus that we really had was on movement. Mm-hmm. And because people are, as you experienced it, s- stuck all day with the non-movement, yeah. what has been so essential and why are people so drawn to this now mm-hmm. of, of working this way? Um, so a lot of my clientele, I, I mean, I do have an older clientele for some parts and like my daytime, (laughs) the retired ones, and they're just, they're just trying to keep their activity levels going. They're trying to keep up with their grandkids. They're trying to keep up with their kids and, and they want to travel. They want to do cruises. They want to do, you know, and so they're just trying to maintain that healthy balance. They're not trying to be marathon you know like athletes are not trying to reach goals like that but it's just to feel good they may be coming off of injuries or surgeries back surgeries and things so they're trying to just maintain functional movement and that's where like I feel Pilates it's all about your posture your alignment so um it's not about trying to crush goals as far as, you know, weight loss. Type. You're not going to lose weight necessarily from Pilates. It's not a cardio exercise, but it it makes you more aware of how you're sitting, how you're standing, how you're moving. When it, Why is this arm stronger than this arm? Why is this shoulder higher than this shoulder? Like it's all those daily habits that you have. But those that, daily habits are will end, end up being recurring stiffness, mm-hmm. soreness, injury. Mm-hmm. Like you... Is it just because you're carrying your bag on that side or is it because you're always standing on one leg? Like, so I've even learned so much about myself. I had knee surgery um, twice when I was in high school, which was kind of <laughs> like traumatic when you're training as a dancer, but um, walking on crutches for those years and then always standing on my right leg instead of my surgery leg. I was always trying to protect it. And then I'll catch myself 
even now, sometimes like when I'm, I'm always standing my right leg, well, why am I doing that? Because when I was 16, I did that for months. So you're just sort of still figuring out what, what are your habits and, and trying to find balance in the body so that put equal weight on both legs or use both arms, not always your dominant side for things and front to back. Don't only do crunches. Don't only do abs, do some back extension. When people are coming to you, are they surprised at thinking that they're strong in certain aspects and Mm -hmm. then you put them through basic movements? Yeah. The most fun is Mm -hmm. because I remember filming one with you, (laughs) the roll-ups. So seeing someone super fit, super trained, like you could kick my butt doing pull-ups, but to get the deep, deep pelvic floor muscles and the lower abs and articulate through your spine and use your, like not use momentum not use the, the superficial layers and the, the superficial strength, we'll call it. And you, to find those deeper core muscles is really cool because then it's, you, might, you blow people's minds. <laughs> they go, I thought it was so strong. I thought it had strong abs. And you do. But is, are you thinking about how you're sequencing through the movement? How are you no, using them? No, I yeah. couldn't. Like, honestly, so just, both Julie and I are lying on the floor and it's kind of like doing this roll up. Yeah. And I could, do, I could do 200 crunches if you exactly. asked me to. But as soon as you're like, no, no you have slow. to go slow and slowly <laughs> trigger. Yeah. Yes. Like I was like two, <laughs> two centimeters off the ground and I was yeah. like, I, I, yeah. I can't do this. And so it's tapping into those deeper muscles. And, and, and what's the some, benefit then for it? So I was going to say for some, it's like you've had kids. So some of those muscles have been stretched. Maybe some who've had kids who've been cut open through a C-section, that's hard to find that strength again. I and don't think I've brief. I, I had two C-sections. Oh, I don't think C-sections. I have. Oh, so that might have been a part of it too. Yeah. But I don't think it reconnected. Mm-hmm. Does and that make sense? Like yeah. I always feel like I do something and then there's like this little blip and then I recatch it again. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's like I go through that, oh, that's where I have no sensation or feeling yeah. or that's where yeah. it was cut up. And so you probably could. It would just take, take a lot more. And because you're used to those hard training workouts, like you're not going to get the burn on, you're not going to get the sweat that you get. It's like, okay, slow it down, take it back to like remedial and, and finding how do I get from A to B without cheating, you know, and finding those deeper. So what then is the appeal? Because you've mentioned, Mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to have this crazy weight loss yeah, uh, or that you're going to be sweating your way, you know, through. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits then? Like give us like the five Five things that are really making a difference for people who are doing this. This podcast is brought to you by Extension Marketing. They are a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department, designing and implementing cost-effective marketing strategies that will grow your business. I can speak to this personally as I've been using the Extension Marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one-hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. I think it depends why you've started. And so a lot will come to me because they've had some kind of injury or they've been referred from their physio. You should be really doing this for your back pain or something. So if you've come off that because you know if you come to me because you've got those problems then you're going to see the benefit of slowing down changing your way and then maybe if they're still doing those other activities you're still doing your other gym workouts you start to see oh this is actually helping with this and so you're applying it because the other thing i was i'm jumping around but like with my older clients it's not you know say their posture we're working on posture because they're aging because everyone's always like this you know and i want because people are listening like you are literally humped over right now yeah like and you have the older gentlemen or like they are really rounded yeah yeah and so we can work on it for an hour and I can tell you where it's supposed to be and like we can work and stretch but it's what you do the rest of your life the rest of the week when I don't see you it's changing those habits and and just being aware of it so knowing what's correct posture and then trying to work towards that throughout the week and do other little you know it's like you can't just do it once a week you have to do it so in between. when you talk about the older demographic coming in mm-hmm. and what are they working on? So it's, it's posture. Yeah. Is it it's stability. Keeping... I and mean, is it, is it, is it fall prevention? Is it yeah, like... like you still need that strength building to maintain whatever, but what I'm saying, I guess, is they're not maybe looking for goals of doing the pull-ups that you do mm-hmm. or, um, they're, they're, yeah, we want to maintain muscle mass, muscle tone, um, because that's all going to help with balance. Balance is a big one. People leave out of their their gym workout training, you know, and then um, flexibility for sure. 
because flexibility will help with the postural alignment. Like if your pecs, if your chest is so tight, because that's all you've been working on is push-ups, then this is your posture. And so then what's that doing to your back and your neck? You know, like you have to find that openness to your chest. So there has to be balance on both sides of the body. So that's what we're really working on is making sure that they're not overworking one side or the other. They're saying often that they wish they'd started this earlier. Mm -hmm. So at what point is too late or what point is the earliest that you should start working on this so that you're getting into the right habits so that you're aging to the way that you can still be mobile? Mm Because it's about mobility, really. Mm -hmm. The further on you're going. Yeah, I don't think you can start too late. So Greta, this is a cool part too, is Greta Leeming, who we talked about, my dance teacher, she started after she retired. She came to me for Pilates and like, so... And she's she's at this point how old? When uh, when she started? I don't know what she said. Like, can I say how old she is? <laughs> Around. But yeah, late 70s when she started with me. She's into her 80s now, for sure. I don't think she'd mind. I think she'd be proud. No, I think she'd be proud. Yeah. She's got a legacy behind her yeah. dancers. Yeah. So she's starting. Yeah. Because there's there's people who are 70 right now going, Mind yeah. you, she's been an active woman, a dance teacher all her life. But yeah, started Pilates training with me at that age. Yeah. So I don't think. And what did she feel it did? Because she had a good understanding Mm -hmm. of body, body mechanics, proper alignment. Yeah. But again, you learn so much more like my Pilates. So I learned a lot through my dance training and how to control my own body. But as far as teaching others, like I learned all about anatomy when I did my, my, even my group fitness and aerobics training. Um, that's where you have to study anatomy a lot more. And then the Pilates anatomy training that I had to do was really in depth. Because you're um, trying to understand the, where's most you of the focus? You have to know what what a muscle does and what, so if I want to do this type of a movement, which muscles am I engaging to do that movement? And yeah, so you have to study not only where they are, but what, what they do, which each muscle does so that I can activate the correct muscles. So Greta's coming in in yeah, her late so it, 70s to, yeah. to do this. And what does she get out of it? Like what um, does she? So that mobility, that strength training, um, and then... What I found, I was surprised too by was balance, working on balance. And to that, like you mentioned, fall prevention at that age, you want to prevent falls. Then there's another side to it too, I think is as they get older like that, it's a social outlet. There's so many other benefits, like mind and body wise to, to be out, to have a, an activity, to be socializing with others to use your brain to and you know think in a way you haven't thought before and oh I found I found thinking my way through a Pilates class mm-hmm. was, was very interesting it is I, a mind I, body exercise because I had my body wanted to go one way and your it old was habits my to old do it habits. your way yeah I was able and I, I have a reformer actually mm-hmm. it's collecting dust I've in my basement and it's beautiful <laughs> and I, I've always wanted to get back to it I just yeah. have to clean out my storage room well enough that I, that I can but I think I was in my best alignment when mm-hmm. I was doing Pilates my posture everything mm-hmm. and I that's looked my I best yeah when I when I was doing it for my own training as a dancer now I wished like when I'm teaching and stuff maybe not now, but definitely early in my late thirties and to 40, I felt stronger and like I was a better dancer and I wished I had it when I was. You felt like you were a better dancer Mm -hmm. in your late thirties. Yeah. I knew how to align my body to find that perfect balance and not sort of dancers tend to, excuse me, pop their ribs out and arch their back. They're pulled up so much. And so I just learned how to calm that down and find my center. And so if you're, if your body's in a correct alignment, then you're up on point or you're on demi point and trying to turn then you can turn better because you're not off axis. Yeah. So I found <laughs> in many ways, I just like even the strength in my, my knee because of my old knee injury, like my feet, I just had more power. There are people who are going to be at home and who I'm not going to be able to convince them to yeah. get out and sign up for a Pilates class, but I, we are going to be able to convince them to drop to the floor and do certain exercises or have certain like, I know those little balls like yeah. there are little things that people can do at home mm-hmm. so what would be if you don't mind some of your recommendations for people who are getting out of bed stiff mm-hmm. sore um their soreness increases throughout the course of the day like they yeah. just find themselves in a perpetual the their body is becoming tighter and tighter yeah so i would say so our spine moves in i have to count them but we'll go through them so there's different ways our spine moves and i'd say try and get each of those movements in every day so flexion that would be a crunch that would be an ab curl so rounding your back but it doesn't have to be a strengthening exercise it could be a cat stretch 
could be something just rounding your back into that flexion so position. So on all fours? On all fours kneeling and then scooping to round your back. Think like how a cat would arch Okay, so scooping out. in and then do you scoop out to arch it or no? That would be extension. Yeah, okay. so that's the next one. And yeah, you could do it that way or you could lie flat on your stomach and then lengthening your chest up away from the mat. So you're arching upwards. Bringing your chest off the... Mm-hmm. This a couple of... So what, five, back, ten repetitions in the morning? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah. Um, the point is to move it so you're not just in the same position all day long. That you get that flexion, you get that extension, rotation. So we twist, we rotate our body. And uh, then we have lateral flexion, so side bending, so that you have movement side to side and you can breathe so our ribs have space mm. to breathe. And, and, it, and it gives space in between your vertebrae too so that you're not just scrunching together and decompressing. So you're getting up in the morning. This could take you, what, five? How long would you say for to someone do those? to like do those? Like if that? you did say, think of those even as stretches instead of strengthening exercises. If you did all of those movements as a stretch, it, yeah, for sure, no more than five minutes to do those. Okay, on all your fours, cat, cat stretch. Cat stretch, bring and, it up, and mm-hmm. then arch yourself back. Mm-hmm. Lie on your stomach, bring your chest off the up, ground. Yeah, uh, a little back extension. Okay. Yeah. And then you could just sit, like our chairs rotate, but if I were to sit and get rotation, and I can even use the handles and get more rotation. Using the handles of a chair to to turn yourself yourself from side to side. So thinking of these as more stretches rather than strengthening exercises. And what does this do? How am I going to convince someone who's not moving to do these? I think, how do you convince them? It's There's got them, the, I to find with anyone. <laughs> no, but I find the only way to really get people they have to do into it. an they have active to try it. right. And when but they you feel have to better. change Julie, you have to change their mindset. Yeah, but if you cuz they're going to say why? Why does this matter to me? Why am I going to get up and spend those 5 minutes doing that? Uh-huh. And you know, I I can't convince you it's no, it's, but it's if taking you that say first you give time them to do a challenge, it. say mm-hmm. do it for a week and tell me how you feel. And so when they feel that they notice the difference of how they feel, then maybe that'll make it a habit. Or you're going to come to me because you're in pain. You know, you've had an injury or your doctor's told you you need to do some core exercises so they get referred. And I also find Pilates can be like that stepping stone from you've graduated physio, you've been discharged from your physio, whatever happened there, and then you're not quite ready for the gym. You don't know where to start in the gym or you're too, you know, to join a group class. You're still in pain. You're not fully rehabilitated. Pilates is that, okay, well, let's look at what's going on and, and then you can strengthen them to get them into those other activities if you're working on triathlon or, you know, like whatever your goals are, it can help you get back into that. Which athletes do you find are now using Pilates as a uh, training tool? Me to, personally? To, to better excel. Clients, like, I mean, or, I, yeah, for yeah, some of your clients or also you start to see, I mean, I've seen NFL players now yeah. getting There's, down I on know, a performer. I'm always seeing more articles about all these, like, athletes who are learning about, like, so famous ones. I've seen, like, on LeBron James is an NBA um, the Christian, I can't say his name, Ronaldo, <laughs> uh, soccer player. Um, but I've actually trained, I was lucky to meet and he's in Linz, so we might get to see him in our cruise, but, um, he's a hockey player, a goalie, professional goalie in the, I don't know, whatever European league over there, but he's from Toronto. So he came back for some off season training and he's, he does Pilates and he believes like you need that deep core strength for, especially for him. He needs to have mobility for his groin, his hips to open, but also stability to engage those muscles. So he doesn't overextend. Um, so it's not over. Anything. And then also to come back because mm-hmm. you're doing like quick butterfly yeah, out, but you yeah. need to bring them. He has to be strong, to, but to bring also them back in. flexible. Yeah. Um, so there's like three sports for me, my clientele daily is, um, I have s- some runners some good distance runners and they need to do cross training of some kind. They can't just run. You can't only run. You need to do strength training. You need to do mobility for sure. Otherwise you're going to get injured over that, all that constant pounding, constant training, um, some cyclists and then skiers, like everyone can benefit. You can apply it to any sport. Yeah. It's just watching your alignment. Watch because think of skiing like you tracking your knees. So, and then you can easily when you're turning, twist a knee or if you fall, you know, like you want that strength in the in the quads. So, the reformer is great for that. All the, the leg yeah. Work. I'll I'll be I'll be honest. I like the reformer. Yeah. I got it makes because it more fun. It makes it more fun. It's I think it made it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. And there's there's things that are moving and things that you're pulling. So I felt like it was more of a workout. Mm-hmm 
for me because I was pulling my body weight, right? Yeah. Like you're pulling yourselves or yeah. you're going against the springs. Uh, but, you know, did feel amazing while when I was doing it. My mom is there. I should yeah. probably mention, and my mom... She probably wanted to. She's my shoo shoo. <laughs> what, 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 is, what does that mean? It's like a, a, a French endearment term, like a teacher's pet. <laughs> yeah. Trust she, me, there are days I think my mom would prefer you being her daughter than me, uh, and we kind of we often joke about that as yeah. well. And I know if she's in need of something, she's off to Pilates. But even yes. that, like to me, is such an honor that she would come to me and trust me with her body because she's got, like you say, well, so very much, similar to Greta, yeah. who was your ballet instructor i mean greta and my mom started their i know club so They're my mom like started corona gym club yeah. which has become you know quite an institution in the city it's 45 mm -hmm. years and mm -hmm. same for greta so yeah. i know that they were young 20 year olds yeah. when they started their in their yeah. their business so, so i know that they were very supportive of each other she knows how to coach and right. she knows the body and so that's intimidating like when she well you first gave her my name i was like oh i don't know if i can do this and and she's a strong-willed woman <laughs> So you can't mess around. You have to know your stuff. And the fact that she keeps coming to me, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I know. We're doing okay. <laughs> but And it's true because she knows the the body yeah. so well. And she can kind of tell, you know, within her. But yeah. she still puts her trust completely in you to kind yeah. of – And especially to kind of say, fix me. Yeah. Because, you know, there's arthritis. Like, do you deal – my mom's arthritic. Mm -hmm. Do you deal with a lot of people who are who have, like, yeah, painful, sure. debilitating yeah. arthritis? And I mean, from what I know about it is that you have to just keep moving. Like you're in pain. Yes, it hurts, but we have to find a way around it because if you don't move the joints, they're going to stiffen up even more. So why do people like those balls so much? That is more of like fascia. So, okay, so let's this, talk about that because yeah. this is something that you're studying mm -hmm. too. I mean, it get, does get into the muscles. So mm -hmm. it's like doing your own self massage instead of paying for a massage therapist, you can kind of control it yourself. So yeah, these yoga tune up balls or the method I teach is called the role model method. It's all the same parent company, but you're, you're using these balls, whether you have them in the little tote bag. So there's two balls together rolling, or you can take them out and use them individually, but you're in control. So say if we're lying on the floor, massaging our backs, if that's like too much pain for you, then we say, okay, well, let's stand up and lean against the wall and put the balls behind you and you're massaging them that way. So what it does is it um, releases, it hydrates your, your fascia is like your connective tissue. And is that what fascia is? Everyone talks about fascia. I know. It's okay. like a it real is a, It's like a new topic. buzz word. It, it's almost it like with keto. It's like fascia. And you could say it's a trend, but it's also that we didn't know much about it. Like from the courses I've done, um, they're learning more about it in the last 10, 15 years. It's becoming more popular because they just used to. So I had one teacher that said, um, you know, when they the anatomy dissect the cadavers and stuff, they used to like, so you have this connected tissue underneath your skin and when they took the skin off the cadavers, they would just toss out the fascia with, you know, like, and then they'd study the muscles and the bones and the joints. But now they're going, oh, wait, this. So picture like um, if you peel an orange, how each section of an orange has that little white. Or yeah, that's, that's like the, the most. It's holding you together. That's what's holding. The membrane, muscle. That, yeah, right? It's the exactly. membrane. And they say that's the most, that's one of the healthier parts. Yeah. Everyone takes it off and, yeah. and doesn't eat it, but you actually should be eating that yeah. part. And so that's what our, is connecting our muscles together. And if it's got a problem, if it's got scar tissue, knee surgery, then it's pulling everything there. There's something, an adhesion, twisting it up. So what's it doing up further up the chain to other parts of your body? So by releasing some of that with these balls, we can sort of, your body starts to feel better. It's just a different way of getting into it rather than stretch. But all movement affects our fascia too. So like... Again, some of the courses I've done, they go back and they go, well, this is kind of what we did in modern dance in the 1990s. <laughs> it's like all these it's kind of swinging motions and stuff. It's like they didn't know what they were doing was hitting the fascia at the time. But those pioneers of modern dance were doing things that made their body feel good. It was more freeing from classical ballet and stuff like that. But it felt good because they're actually giving their fascia a little buzz. <laughs> so these this massage way that you're doing self th self with this roll, yeah. ball rolling method is mm -hmm. that you can be doing this find your trigger points where your soreness is yeah and be able to like have I some teach relief. classes in it mm -hmm. but yeah once you know a few methods or you could get books or follow the videos online but um yeah you can travel with your balls anywhere I can have them in my bag outside Do you? yeah I take them because if I'm in between classes somewhere I might just roll some stuff out if I have time yeah or traveling for sure like I went 
fun holidays this summer to Ireland and I brought those because when you're traveling you're on your feet all day doing tours and then my feet get sore. <laughs> Speaking of traveling, travel. let's talk about the travel. Uh, you were one of the people uh, that I had, you know, was on my list for the experts on the Awaken a Better You wellness cruise. And I think I really thought that you would be a great person to have on board, A, because a bit more of the demographic, mm-hmm. um, but because when we go on these, like we're going to travel, you're flying, you're then you're going to be walking all day mm-hmm. or out – the importance of being able to have this movement and Mm -hmm. for people to decide that morning, maybe like they're going to have options, right? They're either going to do a stretching or Pilates class with you. They can go do a high intensity workout with Pat. You know, like there are going to be options for people, Mm -hmm. but I I feel like a lot of them will either enjoy this in the morning or something kind of like using those balls when they come back from the day and kind of roll out their feet. Mm -hmm. What are you, how do you see I see it just like that. Like when mm-hmm. I travel myself, it's like I, A, I miss my workouts. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so yeah, we went to Ireland this summer and we were staying staying in Airbnbs and stuff. And it's, you're walking all day. Like we were, I was tired, but your body also craves a, a workout, a movement. And it was like, okay, I'm getting soft here. So yeah, I brought my band and I brought a yoga mat folded up in my suitcase. So I was able to lay it out um, on the floor and, and it doesn't have to be, a full hour it doesn't have to be what you do back at home but I would get my main my flexion extension <laughs> my rotation. rotation and lateral flexion I do with some abs I do a little bit of legs I'd use my band for some arm stuff and then it was mainly the stretching and using my balls so after you know walking around or flying even you like you need to sort of massage a little bit when you were in Ireland because I think you already knew at that point that you were going to be doing the yeah. cruise right so are you thinking at that point okay this is these are the trigger points. Yeah, this is what I, I was, want to incorporate. I, I mean, I do that on most of my trips. I usually try and do some movement, even if it's going out to someone's cottage and you, you do a little swimming, but then, you know, I do a little stretching on the dock after or something like it's part of my nature. So I think it's just trying to make people aware that you don't have to have a gym. You don't have to have a lot of space. And if you can't lie down somewhere because you're in a scuzzy hotel room floor, then you can do a lot of it standing. You don't have to, or you can put your foot up on something to do your stretches. It doesn't have to be the ideal conditions, mm-hmm. you know, in a, a beautiful gym with like or a beautiful Pilates studio. <laughs> no, we're going to just be on a beautiful dock in yeah. the middle of the Danube yeah, River. Yeah, I know. It should be, be tough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for people who are looking for more information, yeah. uh, where can they go? And what are the options for classes? And and do you recommend, because there are community centers and yeah. there are places I used to, to go. That's how I started out. Mm-hmm. I was teaching for the city of Ottawa. I was teaching with Sarah Zahab was one of my first bosses. <laughs> she hired me at Strength Tech and I was working – um, a lot of corporate Sarah, places. by the way, was a, I, yeah, I was don't guessing. know podcast what number, but yeah. I had podcast uh, podcast with Sarah Zahab from Continuum Fitness, kinesiologist. If, yeah, kinesiologist. Kinesiologist. And, yeah. and then I had her brother-in-law, Ray Zahab, on. That. How amazing is yeah. his story? He's awesome. Yes. Oh, so you started with her. Yeah, but you she were, hired me um, to do classes with Strength Tech through, like, so I was in the corporate stuff. Mm-hmm. I was, did a lot at Nortel. Yeah. So you are saying, I, I, sorry, people so should, yeah, community yeah, so classes, community classes yeah, start city. there, see what that's like. Yeah. I mean, you might not have like, yeah, everyone has to be certified if they're going to be hired by the, especially the city insurance wise, they have to be certified. So they should be a decent teacher, whether they've taken, um, the extent that I have, because not every studio is going to have reformers and Cadillacs and chairs. So they might not have that extensive knowledge, but to teach on the mat, they should be knowledgeable that right. they can that's yeah. the one way to go but yeah. if you like that and you love the movement and you're mm-hmm. looking to be able to have this ability to move and understand all aspects of the body yeah and and to be honest with you when you're doing that pilates and the reformer on the cadillac you, you look like you're lean, like your muscles yeah. all tone i know you yeah. talk about there's not much weight loss but i you, you tone oh for sure there you, is a toning that yeah. is just it's spectacular and yeah like if you look at we need muscles to help like that's you can't just do cardio you have to do your strength training and so it's a different type of strength training but yeah it lengthens out your muscles because you're being stretched as you're contracting them 
Yeah, mm-hmm. there, there is this nice, there's a cut, there's a leanness yeah. to it. And so you have your classes. I know you're all day, as yeah. you mentioned, with those that were are retired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my, my day class. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> at night, are you able to do these classes? I mean, you're... I do you're... a combination because I still teach dance. So I have um, night one night a week and uh, on Saturday, so I teach at a dance studio. So that takes up like... Some of the time, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I teach in the evenings at my studio as well. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful studio. It's in Thank your you. home. Yeah. But I must say, it it's it's set, it's bigger, up, it's, it's set up to the point where it's, it looks... It took over my whole basement. Yeah. It yeah. grew and grew. I used to yeah. have an office down there. Now my office is upstairs and it's, it's all well, yeah, studio. Yeah, there's like three rooms and mm-hmm. a massive studio mm-hmm. uh, and then cupboards that are filled with every piece yeah. of equipment you could possibly imagine. I hope people take the opportunity to look more into this mm-hmm. because as we are aging... Mm-hmm. Even if you're not feeling like you're aging now, mm-hmm. having this ability is going to have that prevention. It's gentle it's- enough, and especially if you are able to financially or find a space that you can do it more one-on-one or semi-private, you're going to get the class catered to you, what you need. So if you need, because of your injuries or whatever you're coming off of, that you need to work on certain things, knee rehabilitation, or because of pregnancies, you need to work on your core, your lower abs, then you can get that specific class mm-hmm. rather than going to and there's nothing wrong with those group classes it's just that it's going to be pretty general and it's going to be but they should target everything you need it's just that we can modify things a little bit better and and having all the equipment in a private studio it's like okay that's not working for you on that piece of equipment well then let's go over to this one and let's try it here and you'll feel it differently you'll feel the muscles work differently on the stability chair so it's like okay well now transfer that what you felt there and let's try it again on the reformer and see if you can trigger those same muscle groups to work for people who are over top of the computer, people that have their devices, mm-hmm. this is going to be. Are you? Yeah. Have you seen a decline oh in what people are like? I don't know if I've actually seen a decline, but definitely I'm more aware of it. And mm-hmm. even with my dance students, you see a forward head posture. It's awful. <laughs> like I need you to get your hands on Andy, like it? my oh, uh, my daughter. daughter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. getting like now I like literally take her and push her shoulders. But back. I think even part of that just being aware, like so, I guess. To me, it's innate, it's second nature, and I think that's from the dance training. But if you've never been told, and this is where these elderly clients of mine who are retired, they say, where were you when I was, you know, 40 years ago? And why didn't anyone tell me this? So I think it's if they just know, like, that this isn't right. You want your ears in line with your shoulders. Oh, okay, well then, so find a way. Everyone sits up taller. It's okay, I'm going to make Veronica, I'm going to have Veronica sit back up and, yeah, and see. <laughs> So we'll, we'll have it like that. I want people to be able to find more information. Studio One, like the using number the number one. one. Yeah, studio, studio number... one Pilates.ca. Okay, mm-hmm. if you're looking for more information. But it's really, I'm Google Julie Pilates Ottawa. I'm the only one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll come up. Oh, and uh, and of course, so you've been doing some great stuff and helping uh, get some, I know some of your clients are really interested in, in coming in out cruise, on, the, uh, yeah. on the cruise. So I should mention, check out the cruise that we're doing up, which Julie is one of the experts along with Tuscarino Reno and Pat Woodcock and Corey Keeley, all who've been on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I haven't quite narrowed down Amanda O'Reilly, transformation coach, because she's, she's busy, busy in Florida <laughs> and then following around with Tony Robbins. Yeah. And... Melody. And Melody. Yeah. Yes. And you know that connection too, eh? That... We knew, like, our, our mutual friend is her friends with her husband and, like... Yeah, because so when like, we had the dinner, when we first, everyone yeah, met each other, I'm you like, were like, oh, we, we together, know each other. It's fun, yeah. It's like one big happy family, I and you. I think mm-hmm. that's the best part is that as the experts, we feel that way, mm-hmm. and we are so excited to be able to cater this to the people yeah. and what they're looking for and what they're wanting to mm-hmm. get out of the... Because I think, uh, like you said, there's going to be different age ranges and then also... Do you want to get up on your vacation and do a workout right. with Pat? And, and yeah. <laughs> so if you do, because I love getting yeah, in my workout you. on my vacation in the morning so that I can go eat and drink the mm-hmm. rest of the day. Right. People are like, wellness cruise? You know, is this like oh, we're gonna food, eat. food, 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 <laughs> food? And I'm like, drink. it's first off, it's alcohol is it's all holiday. included. <laughs> it's included yeah. uh, as part of it. We're on holiday. Yeah. You were just given options. Mm-hmm. We are giving you the option to but make a not, choice. Like, judging. No. And I think we will be taking part in in it yeah and for me that's how I feel I mean yeah. I work out so that I can enjoy my me food too. and my beverage I that's for me the way to live I'm not gonna <laughs> deny myself yeah I just keep my body as healthy as possible right. so that I can enjoy it's those balanced. indulgences yeah. exactly mm-hmm. so if you're thinking about this cruise because I know some people are coming on but like their spouse or their partner is kind of like I don't want you don't have to you don't have to go you to the full-on to... buffet it's yeah great food but if you want to be able to maybe they'll try something mm-hmm. or they'll try doing a stretching class and or I love they'll try how the, it. Um, one of the the 
the talks we had, someone said, you can do the crew. You're getting all the excursions that you get normally. normally. So everything that we're doing is an add-on bonus. So if you don't right. participate in the bonus, that's fine. You're right. still getting your money's worth on the regular. Yeah, you're still getting everything on yeah. the added bonuses. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what's fun for me in this planning is just trying to figure out all those bonuses. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where my mindset's been. Uh, you can find more information on the cruise at www.signaturecruises.ca. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julie, your Instagram handle's a little bit different. It's Julie Studio One Pilates. Yeah. For the Instagram handle. So yeah. the same, okay, same yeah. title. Uh, and then you can find, I think I've been posting recently, there's some videos and stuff on, on my social media. And I'm going to remind you as we wrap up the podcast, please, I am learning as I'm, every week I feel like I'm learning something different about this entrepreneurial life. But with podcasting, the subscription, having, being a subscriber is the critical part mm-hmm. uh, in the success of this. So please, if you have been listening, subscribe for free. It's, it's nothing to subscribe. And subscribe to it. And then after, just constantly will land in your will land on the phone or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and be sure to like and share and comment if you have the ability to do so definitely helping in help helping to grow the living your life with the online podcast on all the platforms and as i mentioned too we have moved to uh, spotify and to uh, stitcher if you're listening on any of those let your friends know veronica is giving me like the okay we're good to go so that is a wrap on this episode thanks so much julie of living your life with leanne lang have a great day everyone